Whoever plays drums must of course have sticks. If you are just starting out, you may be overwhelmed by the number of different models available, but advanced drummers and even professionals often also struggle to find the right sticks for themselves. Sometimes you think you found the perfect one and then another stick feels better somehow. That is completely normal. How you can still find the right stick for you, that's what this video is about. And I would like to reveal a few very special tricks that will make your life much easier on this search and that I have not seen anywhere else before. I keep seeing videos or articles that are supposed to help you find the right stick, but they only explain what sticks there are and what the abbreviations mean. But that doesn't help you any further. I would like to explain how you actually find the right sticks for you. To find out, you should definitely watch the whole video. As always on this channel, I would like to give you the tools with which you can become independent. That's why we don't talk for a long time about what names like 5A or 7B stand for, because every manufacturer handles this differently. Rather, it will be about what the stick should do so that you even know what you want to look for. Just quickly to the model names. In general, one can say that the sticks with the higher numbers are lighter, those with the lower numbers are heavier and the latter is then again a subdivision. A sticks are thinner and B sticks are thicker and then there is still countless special terms that mean something different for each brand. And of course that is also done on purpose. So you can only compare the models of one manufacturer with each other. Therefore, do not dwell on the names. Better to write down the exact values of thickness and length and so on in millimeters. Then you can also compare sticks from different manufacturers. And now I want to show you how to do this best. Let's start with one of my most important tips. Check out the extremes first. Most people recommend that you take an average model first, like a 5A or a 5B. I am saying the opposite. Otherwise, the following happens. You have an average stick and it works for you. But you don't even notice that it could be better because you don't know anything else. Only after years do you discover other possibilities and find dimensions that suit you better. Better move from the extremes to an average because the extremes inform the mean but not vice versa. So you can make a much more informed and conscious decision because you know the whole spectrum and can compare it. And maybe something extreme will suit you, otherwise you would never have found out. When you start out with an average pair, you don't even know what a very heavy or a very light stick would feel like. The best thing you can do is to buy several very different pairs and switch between them, sometimes in the same exercise or even in the same song or maybe even two different sticks, one in each hand. This also trains your sensitivity and your awareness of how different the sticks behave in the same circumstance because that's what it's all about. First of all, you want to experience how different thicknesses, lengths, shapes and woods react, sound and feel in your hand. And then you can approach the goal in smaller and smaller steps. This is how learning always works. Large swings in all directions and then we become finer and more precise. You will find your perfect stick much faster if you consciously check out the extremes first. Because with this approach you can quickly find out what does not suit you and then make a more conscious decision. Because from the experience with the extremes you can assess much better where on the scale your ideal lies and then get closer to it. Just one disclaimer, be aware that you have to adjust your technique for every stick. The advantage is that you learn to be flexible and work with any stick. Why this is important we will see later on. And this also enhances your awareness for your technique. But if you are starting to work on a specific technique and building your foundation, you should probably do this 
with a stick of average dimensions. And you won't see the benefit of a different model if you use them all in the same way. They have to fit in a framework of musician, technique, instrument and music. If you find the right one, this construct will work seamlessly. And this brings us to the important question, how do we then notice that a stick is right for us? Of course, it should be comfortable to hold, you should just feel good with it. But you will not find out the real benefits of the model during the first test, but only after a while. You have to get used to the stick, it's like building the drum set. You have found the perfect setting for the distances and angles, but somehow it doesn't fit the first time you actually try it out when playing music. That's because you play very differently when you're testing than when you're making music. So always switch off your mind, just play, but then reflect. So play a song like always, or play a band rehearsal or two with the new sticks or on the new setup, and then ask yourself how it felt and if you can improve something. You want to have equipment that you can play with intuitively. So you have to put yourself in exactly this situation and see whether the equipment or the setup works for you. The real benefit often only shows itself in real use and after some time to get used to it. And that's why it's actually not so important to find the perfect pair that doesn't exist anyway, but rather to choose a model that suits you as best as possible and then spend a lot of time with it until you know all the peculiarities and the stick feels completely natural. We achieve this by checking out all the extremes here too. So take the pair that probably suits you well and then play different exercises with them. Play very soft and very loud fast and slow, wild or controlled, and then you will know whether, whether the stick actually suits you. In any case, you will know and control it much better. If after a while you experience pain in your arms or hands or even develop blisters, this is of course a bad sign. But what many forget or won't tell you is that this is often not because the sticks are too heavy, but too light or too thin. Let's say you want to play loud and powerful. And because the sticks do not have enough mass, you push harder and harder, you play with more force and with more tension in your hands. Just as you involuntarily speak louder when you have hearing protection on because you cannot hear yourself loud enough. Take thicker sticks so that you can achieve more volume with less force through the mass of the type of wood. Then you will stay much more relaxed. That's exactly what I experienced when I played in a death doom metal band. So I switched to the Tommy Aldrich signature sticks, which are real baseball bats. They are so heavy that I only had to give a slight impulse. The rest was done by the weight of the stick. Just by throwing them on the cymbals, I could reach the same volume as when I put in a lot of force with the smaller sticks. And so I could relieve my hands. This is the prime example of how the stick should do the work for you. Weight and top heaviness are underestimated factors here. Sticks that are thick and heavy and taper late and only very slightly are good for slower, loud music. If you play very quickly, you should use shorter, lighter sticks and if you play, want to play quietly and in a controlled manner, you should use sticks that are very tapered and therefore not so top heavy. If your sticks break quickly, this can be an indication that you are pushing too hard because you want to play louder. Then the sticks don't have the right dimensions for you or let's say for the music you want to make. But be careful, it could also be that you are simply holding the sticks too tightly so that your technique is not there yet, not where it should be, so that the stick will then work for you. You have to be relaxed for that. So it's best to film yourself, to take a closer look at your technique and you can also check out my tutorials on hand technique. Don't forget that the sticks you use not only have to suit your playing style and technique, they are also a very decisive factor in the sound. Because it doesn't just depend on how they feel in your hand, but whether they bring you to your goal as effectively as possible. The size, the material and above all, 
the shape of the tip determine the sound that comes out in the end. So also think about where you want to go in terms of sound. With doom metal for example, a large flat hat is suitable so that even normal hits on the right cymbal almost sound like crash. For jazz you want a finer, clearer attack so you use sticks with a smaller and round tip. If you play a lot of rim clicks on the other hand, you want to have a little more mass again. Here is an example of how much the stick can change the sound. And that is also something that many do not consider. Because the sticks have such a great influence on the sound, we should get used to the idea that we should also choose different sticks depending on the situation. And that's why you should try many different ones. I always have a whole range of different length, thicknesses, woods and tip shapes ready and choose the ones that get me to my destination. That could just be the weight. I mostly play 5B extreme sticks, but when I play faster or quieter, I use the lightest weight. So if you don't always play in the same context, same band, same style of music, same energy level, you should always have a few sticks for different uses, just like mallets, brushes, rods, and so on. Even the best musicians with their own signature models sometimes choose a different instrument for a specific context. Just like athletes who have their own standard, but sometimes also use a more special device depending on the situation. When I play doom metal I use baseball bats because they make me sound much more voluminous without trying harder. And when I play jazz I use lighter sticks with smaller tips. And with that I want to tell you a really great trick that I once discovered. If you play softer, not only does the volume change, but also the feeling. In rock I play very hard to convey the attitude and not just to be loud. Sometimes you want a low volume, but still energy. I experienced that with a big band. I played with a lot of dedication at a rehearsal and everyone said I was too loud. Admittedly, I just got back from a tour with a hard rock band that day. Big band music can and should be loud sometimes, but in that case I actually overshot the mark, to be honest. When I just played quieter then, I felt totally inhibited in my expression because I had to play everything in a much more controlled manner and had to hold back completely. So I took very thin sticks made of very light wood and with very small tips. And just by choosing the right sticks, I was significantly quieter. So I could continue to play very expressively without being too loud. So I didn't have to limit myself. I could still make big movements and play with enthusiasm and devotion. But the result had the right volume and the right energy thanks to the stick selection. This shows that it can be so important to find the right stick for the respective situation. But of course you should find a standard stick for yourself that you feel comfortable with and with which you can play most things. And play intuitively because the stick is like an extension of you. So you don't have to think about it anymore. That will always be a compromise. If you play loud and fast the stick must not be too light but also not too top heavy. Your stick will be one with which you can best play what you play the most. But there won't be a stick with which you can do everything perfectly. Trying to do so will lead to frustration. Be ready to adapt to the situation. When looking for your stick, 
think about the parameters that influence the feel and the sound. In addition to the length and the thickness, this also includes the material, i.e. in addition to the types of woods, perhaps also like something like carbon or especially treated wood, the weight, i.e. the density of the wood, which can actually vary even with sticks of the same dimensions, then the shape of the tip, the tapering towards the front and the surface. There are lacquered or non-lacquered sticks, there are some with special surfaces or grooves for, for better grip and so on. So start somewhere and keep testing. Sticks break anyway and they should. Then buy a different model each time. Even if you've been playing for a very long time, try something completely different. New sticks also bring you new ideas. A word on signature sticks designed and used by famous drummers. Remember this is mostly marketing. Signature models are no better than others. Everyone has to find the right stick for themselves. When for example Dave Weckl or Benny Greb have found their stick, they can articulate a great reason and that sounds totally plausible when they explain the advantages, but that's still just the stick for this person and a promotional tool for the brand. So just see a signature model as one of the many models that, the, that are out there and look at the pure dimensions. Just because you're a fan of a person doesn't necessarily mean that the stick suits you. The advantage of signature sticks however is that you can see very well how personal the selection can be if you compare the dimensions that different musicians choose. And if you read or hear the reasons that they give for why they choose a certain shape or size, you get a few suggestions for your own search. And maybe you were looking for exactly that, which is of course possible. And some drummers design sticks for very specific purposes. If you want to play exactly this style, this music, then you can and should of course check these models out. I mean, I also have a signature stick, but I want to be completely honest with you. This is the standard 5B extreme model by the brand iSticks from Germany. However, they actually have three peculiarities. I like thick but light sticks, so they are all between 55 and 58 grams per stick. And they are available both lacquered and unlacquered in case you want to compare. And of course they have this very beautiful special color and finish. So if you want to try these sticks you can get them from me or at my online shop. You can find all the information about this in the description. So I hope this video has helped you make a much more informed and confident decision when looking for the right drumstick. And I hope you saw how important it is to deal with how it can affect you and your playing. If possible, go to a store and compare different sticks for an hour. If you have never done this before, this will get you at least as far as a drummer as practicing for a whole hour. That's always what this channel is about. Thinking outside the box, discovering hidden connections and recognizing everything that is relevant in order to effectively learn your instrument. In the next video we will look at the basics of how we hold the stick so it will work for us, the different grips and so on. You can check it out here and to see more videos on drumming, learning and personal growth you should subscribe right now. I will see you in the next one. Until then take care and bye bye.